que su muerte les satisfaga. Hey guys, and thank you for watching another video. My name is Merge, and when it comes to characters in the Breaking Bad universe, the idea of a happy ending has never been more open to interpretation. Because, spoiler alert, Jesse's happy ending and Saul's happy ending are polar opposites of each other, with the only thing they have in common is, well, being alive. Which is more than I can say for Walter's happy ending, but choosing to go out on your own terms and depending on who you talk to, one could argue that that's as happy as an ending as you can get. And speaking of happy endings, in this video I'll be doing a kind of epilogue to my What If Lalo Killed Gus video and give the story a more definitive conclusion, because even though it is over for some, there's still plenty of story left. So if you haven't seen part one yet, click right here in the top right hand corner so you can be all caught up. And if you could leave a like on this video to support the channel, I'd appreciate it. Now, let's part two this bit. So just to do a quick recap, Gus was killed by Lalo, Jesse was killed by Lalo, Walter, he was killed by Lalo, Hank was killed by the twins who were both still alive by the way, and Lalo was killed by Mike, and Saugus disappeared with Kim, and just to line up the timelines, let's just say that they lived together in Omaha under a different alias, Gene Tagovic and Giselle St. Clair. And now that you're all caught up, right now it's the very next morning after all the chaos and Skylar's house is filled with police as they're conducting a search on the house as well as informing her of what's become of her husband. Ma'am, do you know your husband's current whereabouts right now? An officer says to Skylar, and she responds nervously saying, yeah, he's at a cancer treatment center for the weekend. Why? What? What's this all about? And at this point, she hasn't yet figured out that Walter's in the meth business, so at this moment, she is genuinely confused as to what's going on. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but your husband was killed yesterday at a cartel compound, and we have reason to believe that he was involved in the production and distribution of methamphetamine going by the alias Heisenberg. And Skylar, she doesn't even know how to comprehend what she just heard because not only is her husband dead, but she comes to find out that he was a drug kingpin for the cartel. I know this may come as a shock to you right now, but there is still a matter of taking a statement and we still have some questions for you down at the station, so you need to come with us. And Walter Jr. overhears the police speaking, wait, dad's dead? What? That, what, that can't be. What, what happened? Flynn, it's going to be okay. Just call your Aunt Maria and watch your sister. I'll be back soon, Skylar says, leaving with the police down to the station and Walter Jr. turns on the news to find out the truth himself. And while that's going on, the twins hear the news of the fall of the cartel and they pay their Uncle Hector a visit at the nursing home because since killing Hank, they were laying low for the most part, but as you can imagine, when Salamanca blood is spilled, people die. And when the connection was made that Walter White and Hank Schrader were related, the last remaining Salamancas come to the conclusion that Walter was likely a rat and they blame him for what happened at Don Eladio's compound and the order was given by Hector to pay a visit to the family and um, take care of him. We then pick up with Skylar giving her statement at the police station, but being that she is a friend of the DEA with her connection to Hank and Marie and combine that with the fact that she really does know nothing about Walter's business, she just listens as the police rattle off charges that Walter is guilty of, even tying him to the disappearance of Jesse Pinkman and Saul Goodman. And Skylar, in her mind right now, she just wants to break down and scream because she's never felt so embarrassed, alone, and now mentally broken, but she keeps it together long enough to finish up with the police and make it home. And when she gets there, she just walks out into the middle of the street and just breaks down crying, letting it all out. And I know I'm writing this, but could you imagine being in Skylar's shoes right now? Dealing with the fact that the person that you loved and started a family with has been building a secret drug empire and suddenly been killed, and now you're forced to deal with the uncomfortable truth about the person that you really never knew. Later on that day, the twins arrive at the White residence, and the silent killers would just casually walk up and open the front door with an axe in their hand, shocking both Skylar and Walter Jr. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? Skylar says in a panic, putting Walter Jr. behind her, and the twins say nothing as they just continue to walk into the house. Skylar grabs a knife, warning them to get back, and the twins give each other a look, and they continue to move forward. Walter Jr. then steps in front of his mom, telling her to run, and instead of using the axe, Marco would quickly pull out the gun and shooting and killing Walter Jr. right in front of his mom, but allowing for her to escape through the back door and circle around the front but while running she doesn't get far before getting shot in the back and falling to the ground allowing for Lionel to finish her off with the axe and Marco still in the house looks at the baby crib but finds it empty and unknown to them Maria is actually babysitting because since Hank's death Skylar didn't want her to be lonely so she babysits as much as she can being a great aunt while also needing the distraction from the grief and loss and when the twins are done with Skylar and Walter Jr they are just covered in blood and they just leave them how they are and surprisingly there were no witnesses not even Carol hello Carol and when they make it to Maria's house, they are instantly recognized by the agents watching her place. Maybe it's the bloody suits, but who knows. But also, ever since Hank's death, there was always a suspicion that the cartel might come back to finish the job. And in this case, luckily there were agents there to intervene. And it was a bit of a firefight, but in the end, the twins were shot and killed before they could even make it to the doorstep. And when the dust settles, Maria is given the news by an emotional Steve Gomez saying, Marie, I'm, I'm so sorry, but Skylar... Walter Jr. and he just shakes his head unable to give her the news. What about Skylar and Walter Jr. Steve? Maurice says as her voice cracks. Those those monsters they, they arrived with blood in their suits and that was Skylar and Walter Jr.'s blood. I'm, I'm sorry they're they're gone. 
and Marie just breaks down crying, realizing that her entire family is now just her and Holly. And after the funerals of both Skylar and Walter Jr., Holly and Marie move away from Albuquerque to North Carolina to start fresh, with Marie adopting Holly as her daughter, and the two would eventually settle in and live a somewhat normal life as mother and daughter. As for Hector Salamanca, he would never hear from the twins again, now officially being the last of the Salamancas, and he would spend the rest of his days in the nursing home. And even though his family is gone, he's able to die with a feeling of satisfaction knowing that his old enemy, Gus Fring, was killed by his nephew, Lalo Salamanca and he cracks a smile one last time before his finger falls on the bell taking his last breath. And then there was Saul and Kim, or should I say Gina and Giselle, who have a pretty easygoing life in Omaha, but considering that according to the rest of the world, Jimmy McGill and Kim Wexler are supposed to be dead, so they're mainly homebodies, but every now and then they do go out, and one night in particular they go out and they're taking the taxi home. But the entire way home, the cab driver looks at Gene funny, even getting distracted while the light's green, and Gene takes notice. And when they make it to their stop, the cab driver says while looking in the rearview mirror, better call Saul, sinking the heart of Gene. And Gene just says, excuse me? And the cab driver says, I said have a good night. And Gene says, oh, okay, you you too, he says quickly getting out of the cab. And when the cab pulls off, Gene says, D did, you, did you hear that? And Giselle says, yeah, he said have a good night. Are, are you sure? He says, responding confused and nervous. I mean, you were right there, didn't you hear him? She questions him, and Gene just says, quickly changing the subject. Right, right, yeah, just, just checking. And they head inside. And for the rest of his life, Saul lives in the paranoia of being spotted. Some days are better than others, but it's a secret that he takes to the grave, even keeping it from Kim. And although she's quiet about it, Giselle, aka Kim, lives every day just as paranoid, but also choosing to take it to the grave as well. Because although they did get away with it, there's not a day that goes by that they don't regret the choices they made. So in the end, how happy is this happy ending? Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching the conclusion of the storyline, but now I want to hear from you guys. What did you think of the conclusion of the What If Lotto Killed Gus storyline? Whatever it is, comment down below and I'll do my best to respond. Until then, my name is Merge. Later.